Hey everyone, how's it going? I want to have a little discussion about how I personally like to learn new programming languages or new libraries or new frameworks. And hopefully you guys can take some of the advice I give you and just kind of follow my advice. Now just keep in mind that the way I do it may not apply the same way as you might learn best because I've been coding for a long time now. So when I look through a language, half of the stuff I can just kind of skim through or even skip and just jump straight to the code and kind of in my mind mentally map like, okay, this is how you declare a function. I don't need to read a, a paragraph or anything that explains this is how you declare a function. I already know since I've coded with Java, I've used JavaScript, I've used Python, C Sharp in the past. I think I've touched other languages. Um, but the, the same ideas apply to every language, right? Once you learn how to declare a function or how to import a package or declare a, a package, this is like very similar to how you do it in JavaScript, right? I code full-time in JavaScript slash TypeScript now, but again, like, the same paradigms. I'm assuming there's some type of package manager that exists for Go, and there's a way to install third-party dependencies. And if you kind of just skim over different things, you'll find that there is something called Go Mod, which I believe allows you to just install new packages. There's also like a file that keeps track of your packages and what versions they are. So again, just remember the way I'm saying might not apply to you because you might be more beginner. You might not be able to kind of do what I'm doing. But what I like to do is I like to go and read through any of the tutorials. So on Go, for example, I'm learning Go. I go to the docs and I try to find any type of getting started guide. And most good libraries and frameworks will have some type of like getting started. So for example, you know, when I was looking into Svelte as well, I basically would find there's like a tutorial. Here you go. There's this tutorial that I actually ran through. And obviously I skipped over some stuff because I'm familiar with React. I used to work with Angular. Um, I've used Vue. So learning something like Svelte, like the matter of just knowing the higher level concepts and like, okay, what is the syntax for declaring some state? Okay, here it is. How do I render that state? Here it is. And that's really like all I need to do. I just need to see a quick example of how to do something. And I already understand the higher level concepts. But after kind of skimming through and just seeing some of the examples of, you know, how to do something with syntax, I think I got through like the first three pages of this and I got bored. So I'm like, screw this. I'm going to go and actually just play around with some Go code. So I ran the command to basically set up a Go module, um, kind of look through the files and try to mentally map like what this stuff is. And it ends up being like very similar to like a package lock and a package JSON file. Um, and then I started writing out a really basic Go script that read in some files or read in a file, looped over all the entries in that file and printed them out, right? So I start with something small just to see if I can I read from a file, can I process the file? And can I do something with the information that's in the file? And once I've convinced myself that I can do that, you know, I'm learning new syntax along the way. I'm learning like, okay, you have to use double quotes when you make strings. I have to do this func keyword. I have a function here. You know, this is how you declare slash initialize variables and automatically assign them the things. Okay, so this thing, this is actually a, you know, a sub module I created called readers. And I kind of learned about, okay, well, to make a new folder, you just make a new folder called readers. And then inside of the files of that, directory, you declare the package that matches the directory name. That's kind of how Go works. And then I learned about like, you know, how do you separate your modules into different files? How do you import those? I learned more about like opening up a file. And again, every step along the way in my brain, I'm like, okay, what I want to do? I want to be able to load in a file. So then I go to Google and I say, um, how to load in a file with Go? And I'll go find some example. Okay. And I'll look at the code. Okay. This is how they read in a file. This is how you process it. So I'll do that step. And then, you know, in their example, they'll show like a defer somewhere probably. And I'm like, oh, what does defer mean? So I'll go and look that up. So every step of the way, I'm like just writing some stuff down. It's kind of like if you're reading a new book and they start throwing some really big vocabulary words your way and you don't know what they mean. You go and you look up the word. So you kind of expand your, your dictionary in your head. So then you, you know, you're reading the file and you look at what this thing is and it's a star OS dot file. You have no idea what that is. And you're like, okay, well, I've used C in the past. I did C and C++ in college. We learned about pointers. So I'm assuming that this is like a pointer to a file. And knowing that it's a pointer, I kind of knew that, okay, well, we probably have to close something on it. So I did a defer close. But then I'm like, how do I convert the pointer and get all the information from that file pointer? So then you either go and you Google that, mm -hmm. which led me to this example where you basically have that file pointer you call read, you pass it some data and what is this actually doing? I don't even know at this point. So it's it's taking the file and it's reading it into this like buffer here. So I made this like little buffer up here. 
I honestly don't know why this is up there. I should probably put it down here. Um, so again, like a buffer is a higher level concept. I already kind of know what it is. It's like a, you know, a, a predefined array of certain length that you can put data into and then read data off of that. So you do that, you read that to the buffer. And then at this point, I'm like, okay, well, how do I combine all of the, the bytes together into a single like byte array? And you go and you learn about a pinned. And then you just start appending these bytes together. And then finally you're like, okay, well, how do I actually convert what I've read? Because I'm trying to read in um, this items thing, right? This has like an array of different items. We have eggs, bread, and milk, and some prices. How do you convert those to actual data structures in Go that you can use? So when you go and you read up and you Google like JSON, how do, how do you read in JSON in Go? Which leads you to this example. Um, we basically call JSON unmarshal. You pass it your byte array, but then you also pass it a pointer um, to an array of some type, right? So in this case, I have an array of items, or as you can call it a slice, and those are all typed with this struct. And then you see this weird syntax, you're like, what the heck does this mean? And you go and you Google that, and it's like some special way to tag your different properties on your struct so that your unmarshal function knows to look at those tags and can actually do something with them. They might, they might be called labels. I don't know if they're tags or labels at this point. Um, but then you run this, and that basically will give you back, uh, if you look at items here, you have all the items that you can use, right? So this returns the item here. And then at, along this whole process of like learning, you look and see, okay, usually when I call something, I get back some data and I get back either an error that could potentially be nil or not, right? So then you go read up on that and you realize that a go is really based around like you should kind of handle your errors. You should have your checks here and do something if something goes wrong. Um, and I was also doing all this on a live stream, right? So as I was streaming, people were actually giving me feedback live saying, you know, certain certain ways to do different things. An example, like someone pointed out that I can say error F to print out these errors and wrap them with some additional um, text. There's also a way to basically, you know, you can say panic to cause it to just basically crash. I think there's also a way to, you can say log fatal. So again, along the way, it's like, I'm not going through a tutorial course where I'm like learning all these things one by one. I'm starting off with a really basic thing that I'm trying to build, which is how do I read in a JSON array of data and process it and go? That's all I started with. And I went down this like exploratory path of like doing all these different steps and going to Google and learning about how to do these things. And then finally, at some point, I was just able to put it all together into like two files, this entry.go and this item reader.go. And I read in the file and then I kind of loop over. I learned about loops as well. Like how do you loop over collections and go and you go and you Google that. Turns out that this is the syntax for it. There's also the traditional for loop you can do as well. And I basically loop over all the items. I sum up all the prices and I print those out. So that's kind of the process that I take when I need to learn something new or if I want to learn something new. I just start with something basic and try to build it out from scratch. And along the way, you learn the syntax. And then after I did that, I started going down the path of, okay, I wanted to learn something more advanced, right? So then I started to look into Go routines, right? That's the whole selling point of Go is you can easily, you know, uh, split off your work into concurrent processors and you can have multiple workers working on data at the same time to really utilize your CPU and all the cores on your CPU. So that's what I kind of looked into. So then I'm like, okay, well, let's take this thing to a next step. Let's take it to, I have a hundred files here and each one of these have 1.5 megabytes of a novel. How do I read all those in at the same time and run a histogram count across all the words? So basically how many times does the word and show up in all of these novels? So I started going down that path of like setting up a script to read in all the files. You learn about file readers, you learn about walking the directory. Um, and then I had to lo learn about like, how do you set up parallel workers using the go routine? Um, how do you set up channels? You learn about that. How do you basically push stuff into the channel? How do you consume from stuff from the channel? You start learning about concurrency and how locking works um, and how your program will just not work if you don't have this stuff set up in the right way. And then once I had that set up, you'll notice I have like a search. I have a search fast. I have a search slow. I basically tried the same implementation different ways, right? I tried to solve the problem in different ways. Can I make it faster? Can I change how I'm doing stuff to make this as fast as possible? And finally, I landed on a solution that looks good like this. But when I first started, it was something really rudimentary um, and super slow and was kind of buggy. And then the second thing I did, I had a live stream, I think, Sunday night that some of you might have tuned in on is I went ahead and made a new project and I'm like, okay, now that I've learned like the syntax of Go and I learned like some of the fundamentals, how do I make an API using Go? 
Okay, so I just basically started a live stream. A lot of people in chat helped me out. They gave me some suggestions of like what libraries I should use. And I basically just hit the ground running. I started just playing around with the HTTP library in Go to make a really basic web API that could accept the Git request. Um, and then I started looking into like, how do I send back responses? How do I set headers? How do I grab path parameters like this? Like for example, I have a route here where you can say slash Pokemons and then specify a name like ditto. And I need to figure out how to read that in code. So you basically just keep going back and forth between the documentation, people in live stream are giving you suggestions. I tried chat, chat GPT a couple times to answer my questions. Me personally, now that I have the experience, I don't go and read through a whole online Udemy course. So something I forgot to mention was before I started like diving into all this code, I did watch a six and a half hour tutorial, but I will say I watched this at like the highest speed possible. So I went here uh, and I'm not trying to flex on you all. I'm just trying to be realistic that I've been coding for almost like 10 years now. So I'll watch it like at the fastest pace I possibly can. And a lot of the stuff he talks about is stuff that I'm like, I don't really care about. Like I could easily jump over this. I don't care about garbage collection. And then I'll just skip forward just to get the information I need. Like I'm pretty sure I skipped the first things. I went the variables, maybe watch this for like a minute. I could just looked at the code examples. I know how to declare a variable now. I know how to like, you know, this is like a shorthand rule. He explains it really quick. But again, like as I get to points where I'm like, okay, this is boring. I already understand this. Like, okay, now we're doing like printing with percent V. That makes sense. We have types and stuff like that. He talks about casting. And I literally just keep pressing the right arrow and just listen for a little bit to see what he's talking about. And if I find it like useful, I might stop and just listen. But if not, most of this stuff is like self-explanatory when you're actually like decent um, because all these syntaxes really build off of each other. So once you've learned C and you learn JavaScript and you learn Python, to learn something new like Go or Rust, it's really not too much more complicated. To learn something like the Go keyword in Go, it's a little bit different. So that's something that really took a lot of extra extra effort for me to understand. But all this other stuff, like you can literally just skip through it. So that's how I like to learn. Again, I'm not trying to flex on you all, but I've had had people ask me like, how do you go about learning new things in programming? Because there's like so much to learn all the time and so many new frameworks and libraries that come out. But for someone who's a noob or a beginner, like they're going to be spending so much time reading through all this stuff and trying to understand what half the words mean. But for other more experienced people, they're just going to skim through this and be like, okay, just give me the most important pieces of information. I think that's what comes with more experience is you're really good at parsing through the noise and just finding the things that are that matter, right? So let's just go ahead and wrap this up. If you enjoyed this little talk, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, press the bell icon. Also, I got a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you want to talk to me directly or just get help when you're trying to learn how to code or whatever. Have a good day. Happy coding.